Hello everyone, this is Rohit Manohanan from Networkers Home and welcome back to the Checkpoint Lab training. For this video, we will be talking about DLP Blade, Data Loss Prevention Blade. Basically, Data Loss Prevention Blade does is protect the data in motion. Or you can say data protection that lives in the network. It saves the data throughout the network and enforces the policy at the time when the data is flowing through it. Okay, so for example, a user and let me take my pen out yeah for example a user and i'm creating a notepad file uh, xyz yeah it's notepad file it will be dot txt and he wants to upload this file to google drive a firewall if it uh, a firewall if it has dlp enabled if this text file has some keywords like secure firewall and dollars he will try to prevent this he will try to protect this data and it, there are several kinds of options that he can do with it he can actually block it quarantine it audit it prevent it notify it uh, anything he can block the data also so if he tries to upload to uh, google drive he can perform the action he can encrypt this data he can Basically, it's about secure data. If you if you are not authorized to put something to any website, it will try to protect it. So this is what DLP Blade does. Yeah. So without wasting time, and one more thing that it can also help us uh, help us in uh, social media websites. If you uh, if you don't want your users to upload any photos or something like that through the through your internet through the social media, you can create a policy. Okay. So without wasting time, let's uh, jump into our lab, and I will try to uh, I will enable our DLP blade in CPSU. So let's go for firewall too. Okay, for that you have to click uh, you have to check this DLP, and it will pop up a window that new loss prevention data blade uh, wizard is there. Okay, I will click on next, and it will ask our organization name. From which it can identify it, and I have already added uh, two of the my organizations, Ecotoso and NH. I'll click on next. If you want, you can add it. Okay, you have to activate DLP portal. If you want your users to handle DLP incidents, this this should be check mark. So I will uh, check mark it. And if you want your users for mail uh, protection, you have to click uh, check mark it. Uh, right now, I have not created any object for mail server, so I will go for next. And there are a couple of options. I will go for file transfer, web, everything. You can select any, everything. So I will click on next and I will hit off finish. And that's it. You have enabled the DLP feature in CPSG2. And if I click on OK, you will see a blade icon here. Right? So, how to configure this blade icon? You have to go for security policy. And under shared policy, you will have DLP. If I click on this, it will show us open DLP policy in smart dashboard and I will click on it. And one more thing, uh, one more thing that I want to say is uh, if your smart dashboard is open, you can't edit your, uh, you can't edit your uh, firewalls. So I will show you one. Let's show you that. If you want to edit it, if I click on CPSG2 or anything, CPSG2, I will click on edit. I will show you an error. Okay, sorry. Uh, DLP is not open. So let me open the view. Let the one dashboard open first. And let it load. And after that, you can't open this. It will give you an error that uh, if if this is open, you can't uh, edit it out. Yeah. So it prompted me back into DLP. Means a smart dashboard. Yeah, you can do. So, there are a couple of uh, policies that are already there. As you can see, uh, I am under data loss prevention. I have clicked policy. Under policy, as you can see, there are a couple of policies already by default in this DLP. And, uh, and uh, there is data source, destination protocol, exceptions, action, track, install, everything. So we will try to create our own policy. For that, you have to click on this icon, which will uh, add above and none and i'll go for data data types are many kinds so uh, 
In banking sector, we have a PCI compliance. In insurance, we have HIPAA and PI related, which is basically personal identifiable information. So it's up to you. So I will create my own data type. So how to do it? I will click on this small plus icon. And if I click on this small plus icon, and as you can see, I have uh, many types of category, and I want to create one. So I will click on new, which will open up a window. It's a little bit slow. Wait. Uh, okay. So I click this a couple of time and wait for the program to respond. Let it load. So as you can see, we have a data type wizard and you have to name it. So I will go and name it something. So I will just uh, for demonstration, I will name it my data or uh, anything you want. So I will go for keywords or you can go for document based also, or you can go for fingerprint, anything you want. So I will go for the first one, which is keywords. And if I hit enter, it will ask me what type of keywords that file should consist. So I will go for firewall as I showed you. Yeah, and click on add. I'll go for secure. Any kind of file which has these keywords, and I will just go for that thing. And if you, uh, and the, uh, the thing that you can actually uh, mention the number of keywords uh, or phrase, it should consist at least, means uh, you can actually mention that these both keywords should exist in that file by clicking on and making it two. Yeah, or all the keywords and phrases also works. Okay, so I will hit on next. And that's it, you have created your data type. And under here, you will see the data type. What you have to do is simply click on it. And click OK, which will select our data type. Now, about organization. If the organization basically means our organization, whatever you're doing, you are in. So if you double click on it, you have a feature called any, you can select specific networks and hosts. If I click on edit, and as you can see, I have already one specific host, which is managing piece. You can actually mention a network also. If you have a network object, you can go for branch network, whatever you want. So you can actually mention the network or host for which you have to enable this DLP policy. So I'll click on, okay, you can actually perform the, the beauty of DLP is that it also protects our VPN traffic also. and you can specify users also. So that, and you can email addresses, whatever you want. So there are a couple of options you have to just try it out. So I will go for okay. And the other thing is outside my organization, it's okay. Means my destination is outside my organization. You can select protocol, what are the protocol, specific protocols you can go for. And the best thing about uh, this is you have many actions. So to look for more actions, you have to click right click on it. And there are many options. You can actually detect it. You can inform the user that you go, you, you, you are not authorized to do that, or you, uh, you are not, uh, these are the company policies, use it uh, properly. You can actually prevent that and block it. If I click on prevent, it will give the use, it will block it. And you can actually, if you double click on it, Uh, there is, you can actually add a custom message, whatever you want. Okay, you can add, uh, this is not allowed, which means any keyword you're trying to put in any server, it will not allow that. And you can, uh, you can install on DLP blades, means whatever firewall, firewall, it's firewall DLP blades are enabled, you can do that. And there are categories. Uh, right now, there it is none, and you can select the categories. So I will go for any category. I will go for business information. It's business information, and that's it. That's how you create a policy. Okay, so you have created a policy which which says that whenever a user is trying to upload a file or try to uh, do something with that file with the keywords firewall and secure, it will prevent it. Okay. So for that, you have to go and save it. I'm going and saving it. Because after this policy creation, you have to save it. So 
So it's updating data to server, which basically means it's uh, updating the policies. Okay. So the next thing that you have to do is go for HTTPS inspection and add this DLP. And as you can see, we are in our smart dashboard, and you can uh, instead of going to uh, again to security policies and under state policy, you can directly hit here, and you have to add DLP. So let it load. Yeah, uh, as you can see, we have a predefined policy and there are all blades selected. If you want specific blades to allow, and basically I had specific blades, but it, right now it's all. So it's good. If you are, if you don't have uh, this all, you can specifically mention what blade you will want. You have to select the data loss prevention. Also. So this means uh, only data loss prevention blade will work for HTTPS inspection. So let us add all if you want, it's up to you. Any was great. And let's click this thing on. Yeah. So after this, you have to hit save. And that's that's how you that's how you do data loss prevention, and that's it. And if I try to create uh, let let me just add one couple of more blades so that. Yeah, let's add IPS, content awareness, uh, yes, uh, IPS, anything. So basically, we are using only DLP, so it doesn't matter. I will go for a save. Okay, save and hit save. That will update to update this data to server. And let's close the smart dashboard. And one more thing, this I will show you again. If our if we are in a smart console. Yeah, and let me. Yeah. If we are in a smart console, and if I go to my gateway server, and if dashboard is open, you can edit it out. And if I double click on it, it will say, you "Pop me error. You are not allowed if your open legacy editors are open." So my smart dashboard is open. You can't edit anything in your file. So I will close this thing, and that's how you implement. I will close it. Yeah, and it's not closed. Yeah. So let me close it again. Yeah, it's closed. Great. No, no, it's not closed. Open it. And uh, let me do one thing. Let me create a notepad. And right now I don't have internet connection, but I will show you. Now, uh, what does it mean? So I, if I right click on it, I will go new. I'll go for text document. Okay, sorry. Uh, I have to go for right click, new. Let's go for text document. Yeah, and name it. Uh, oh, okay, four is enough. And uh, this firewall is okay. So I misspelled it. Let me clear it up. Yeah. Wow. So actually, it's a virtual machine. That's why it's a little bit laggy. Firewall is secure and. Nothing. That's it. And I will click and press Control S, which will save it. And if you try to upload this file, this specific file, let me take my pen out. If you try to upload this specific file to any of the platform or any of the platform, because it has two keywords, firewall and secure, it will be prevented from. It will give you a block message that uh, you are not allowed. Whatever custom message you have set or the default one. And you will be not allowed to do that because my action is prevent, and it will give give a specific message to so anything. So you can actually create a data type whatever you want. So this is all about data loss prevention. I right now do not have internet in my Windows PC, so I can't show you. That's why I can't show you. But if you try to upload it to anywhere, it will not allow. It will prevent it and give you a block message. That's it for this uh, DLP blade and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.